Before we begin, I'd like to point out that Steve Cottrell has recently had spells in hospital due to COVID-related pneumonia. Fortunately, he was recently released and will continue his recovery at home whilst continuing his managerial duties for Shrewsbury. On a personal note, I'd like to wish Steve a quick recovery and hopefully he will be back on the touchline soon. If he can achieve the things you're about to see in this video, he can certainly defeat COVID. Get well soon, Steve. Steve Cottrell is a manager well known across the Football League. He has managed clubs such as Burnley, Nottingham Forest, Portsmouth and Bristol City. His time as manager has been lengthy, but perhaps his greatest achievement was at the start of his career in England. He joined boyhood club Cheltenham Town in 1997. At the time, the team were in the Southern Football League Premier Division and had never been in a Football League in their entire history. When he left, however, the club's fortunes had gone beyond their wildest dreams. This is the story of Steve Cottrell's Cheltenham Miracle. Steve Cottrell was born in Cheltenham on the 20th of July 1994. His father passed away when he was only 11 years old. This motivated Cottrell to put in place a strict fitness regime to himself to ensure that he lived to an old age. He began his playing career at his local side, where he played nine times and scored one goal. He would go on to play for Burton and then Wimbledon. He struggled during his time at Wimbledon due to a cruciate knee ligament injury and only made 25 appearances in four years for the Dons. He went on a loan spell at Brighton before signing for Bournemouth upon the expiry of his contract. Cottrell's fortunes improved upon signing for the Cherries, winning three Player of the Season awards and scoring 18 goals in 55 league starts. Unfortunately, another knee injury occurred and he was forced to retire from football. Cottrell immediately entered management, taking over at Irish side Sligo Rovers in 1995. He did relatively well in his short time at the club. Whilst not winning any silverware, he guided the club to a third place finish in the Irish League, took them to the League of Ireland Cup final, ultimately losing on penalties to Shelbourne, and took them to Europe, earning impressive draws against Nantes and Herravine. Cottrell went on to rejoin his hometown club Cheltenham Town as manager in February 1997. Appointing him as manager had been one of the first actions of new chairman and lifelong fan Paul Baker. The club had spent its entire history in non-league and failed to get ascension to the Football League in 1968 when they had FA Cup legend Ronnie Radford in their side. The club had few moments of note, with perhaps its greatest achievements being local cup wins and drawing a crowd of 10,000 to an FA Cup tie against Blackpool in 1934. Momentum soon swung in the right direction under Cottrell, and the club finished as runners-up in the Southern League Premier Division. However, the club had the advantage of default. League winners Gresley Rovers did not meet the stadium requirements to play in the conference, and so, as runners-up, Cheltenham qualified to play in their place instead. Cheltenham had been playing games against local rivals Gloucester for decades up until this point. The two sides have not faced each other in a competitive fixture since. Cottrell's first full season continued Robin's momentum, he said he wanted a side where if a fight in the dressing room broke out, all 11 players would join in. Cheltenham reached the third round of the FA Cup, eventually losing to Reading, and also finished an incredible second in the league. It wasn't enough to get promotion though, as Halifax had beaten them to a conference title by 9 points. However, this didn't stop Cottrell from guiding the club to their finest moments yet. Cheltenham had earned a trip to Wembley to compete in the 1998 FA Trophy final against Southport. They had knocked out Rushton and Diamonds, Ashton United, Hayes and Dover Athletic to book their spot in the final. Cheltenham took approximately 18,000 fans to Wembley, an amount that is over one and a half times the current capacity of the club's stadium. Despite being the underdogs, Southport controlled large parts of the game, with Bob Bloomer making a last-ditch tackle to deny Southport, and goalkeeper Steve Book came out on top in a one-on-one -on -one to keep the Robins in the game. Southport hadn't taken their chances, and they were soon made to pay. In the 79th minute, set-piece specialist Russell Milton swung a free kick into the box, and the ball was flicked on by left-back Jamie Victory to Jason Eaton, who headed the ball home and won the Robins the first major silverware in their entire history. Cheltenham captain Chris Banks walked up the famous steps and held the trophy high as the Cheltenham faithful cheered on. It was the best day in the club's history, but little did they know, things were soon to get even better. Cheltenham continued their momentum, fighting promotion throughout the season, they were keen to go one better than the season before, and on the 3rd of April 1999, they had the chance to show this. Cheltenham travelled to league favourites Rushton and Diamonds, in what was billed as a six-pointer in the chase for promotion. In the days before playoffs in the conference, every point counted. Over 6,000 fans attended the game, and one-time Cheltenham player Miguel de Souza put Rushton into the lead in the first half. 
Cheltenham created chances, but just couldn't make them count, and it seemed as though Rushton would have a vital result in their title chase. On the 90th minute, however, defender Michael Duff swung in across, and the ball was headed in by Mark Freeman in front of the travelling Cheltenham fans. The noise had barely settled down when Freeman had the ball again, and hoisted a long ball forward for John Bro, who prodded the ball across the goal, and on the end of it was centre-forward Neil Grayson, and Cheltenham had won in the dying moments, sparking jubilation in the away contingent. With seven games to go, Cheltenham's destiny was in their hands. D-Day for the Robins came 19 days later on the 22nd of April 1999. Cheltenham hosted the Oval at Wadden Road, knowing that a win would seal a place in the Football League for them for the first time in their history. In front of a nervous crowd keen to see history beckon, play commenced. Disaster struck when the Oval took the lead in only the second minute through Owen Pickard, but the Robins breathed a sigh of relief when Jamie Victory equalised minutes later. The crowd were delighted at half-time as they went into the dressing room with a 2-1 lead, thanks to a header from Neil Grayson. Nerves soon struck again, however, with Yeovil making the scores two apiece with a penalty from Warren Pratmore. Fate soon seemed to be going against the Robins. The Yeovil keeper made an incredible double save before Neil Grayson fired the rebound wide. As the Wadden Road crowd bit their nails as the game entered added time, the Robins continued their desperate quest for a winner. In the 97th minute, Cheltenham had a free kick near the Yeovil penalty area. Up stepped local lad Keith Knight to deliver. Knight swung the ball into a box, and as it reached the six yard area, Michael Duff and Jamie Victory rose to head the ball. The ball moved across the goal, before bouncing and finding its way into the bottom corner. Wanton Road erupted, and the final whistle soon followed. Steve Cottrell dropped to his knees, overcome by emotion, taking his boyhood club to heights they had never seen before. Fans invaded the pitch, and Paul Baker celebrated with champagne. Whether the winning goal came off the head of Michael Duff or Jamie Victory remains a mystery, but that debate is insignificant in light of what had been achieved. Cheltenham had reached the Football League for the first ever time, and Cottrell showed that the club weren't just along for the ride. Against the odds, Cottrell managed to secure consecutive top-half finishes for the Robins in their first two seasons as a Football League club. It was a phenomenal achievement for a club that had not long before been semi-professional, and did not have the budget of a lot of clubs around them. And while Cottrell had certainly had some incredible highs at the club, perhaps his greatest was the 2001-2002 season. Cheltenham began their FA Cup campaign that season with a stunning 6-1 thrashing away at Kettering. They proceeded to win 2-0 at Hinckley in the second round to set up a third round tie with Oldham. They had never got past the third round in their entire history, and with a home tie, perhaps this was their chance. Cheltenham knocked out the side in the tier above them 2-1, with two goals from Tony Naylor, a player who had only been past fit for the game moments before kickoff. The Cheltenham faithful dreamed of being drawn against the likes of Manchester United, Arsenal or Liverpool. However, a home draw against Division 1 Burnley would suffice. A sellout crowd attended Wadden Road for the fixture, and in the 23rd minute they witnessed a free kick from Russell Milton hit the back of the net to open the scoring. The cheers had only just died down when four minutes later, Milton crossed in the ball and striker Julian Allsop headed home to double the lead for Cheltenham. Burnley got one back, and Cheltenham's joy turned to nerves. The Clarets banged on Cheltenham's door time and time again, but the determination and bravery of Cheltenham meant that they could not be breached. The Robins held on to win 2-1 and entered the fifth round of the Cup, where they were drawn away to West Bromwich Albion. Cheltenham lost the tie 1-0 and went out of the Cup, but the incredible run inspired confidence in the side, and they would carry this throughout the rest of the season. Cheltenham finished fourth in the third division, missing out on the automatic promotion places by a single point. They went into the playoffs and faced Hartlepool United in the semi-final. Things did not look good in the first leg when the Robins went behind, but Neil Grayson stole a late equaliser to make the game one all going into the second leg. Hartlepool took the lead at Wadden Road, before Lee Williams equalised with a strike from 25 yards. The game went into extra time, but neither side was able to break the deadlock, so it had to be penalties. The tight contest continued into a shootout, with both sides scoring four of their first five penalties. Julian Allsop scored his to give Cheltenham the lead in sudden death, before Richie Humphreys hit the crossbar to seal a place in Cardiff for Cheltenham. Cheltenham would face, once again, Rushton and Diamonds. Diamonds had recovered from their defeat to Cheltenham in 1999, and this season had been their first as a Football League side. This being the first promotion playoff campaign for either side, history beckoned for the victors. On the 6th of May 2002, in front of over 24,000 spectators in Cardiff, winger Martin Devaney shot a goal in the 24th minute. 
The shot was saved, but Devaney leapt onto the rebound to give Cheltenham the lead. Only moments later, Rushton equalised through Paul Hall. The teams went in level at half-time, but Cheltenham emerged for the second half dominant. A few minutes into the second half, Julian Allsop tapped the ball into the net to restore Cheltenham's advantage. The drama continued, with Allsop missing a great chance to seal the game for Cheltenham, heading just wide. The Robins were denied a penalty, and Martin Devaney had to go off injured, replaced by Neil Grayson. In the 80th minute, Neil Grayson hit a powerful shot towards the Rushton goal. The ball hit the woodwork, but it bounced out to midfielder John Finnegan, who curled the ball into the net to make it 3-1 and take Shelton to a third tier of English football for the first time in their history. Mark Yates and Michael Duff lifted the trophy in front of a delirious Shelton faithful. Cultural stated after the match, I always said that this is the way to go up. Shelton will never have another season like this. Sadly, this was the end of the road for Cultural at Shelton. Stoke appointed him as their new manager later that month, and without him, Cheltenham went straight back down. In his final home game at Cheltenham, Cottrell stayed behind and shook the hands of all those who applauded him, proving himself a local hero and man of the people. Cottrell has gone on to achieve many great things since leaving Cheltenham. He guided Notts County to a League 2 title in 2010, and won the double of League 1 and the Football League trophy in 2015 with Bristol City. His knowledge of the Football League is remarkable, but his only sniffs of Premier League football have been spells as assistant manager for Leicester City and QPR respectively. He is perhaps one of the greatest English managers, never to have managed a side in the top division. Since Cottrell took Cheltenham to the Football League in 1999, the Robins have only spent one season outside the Football League. They were promoted to the third tier again in 2006, and have truly established themselves as a Football League side. Without Cottrell's management, it is likely the club would still be semi-professional and not even be able to dream of the success they had under him. With Michael Duff, one of Cottrell's biggest disciples at Cheltenham, now being in charge of the Robins and leading them to battles for promotion, Cottrell's legacy shines bright at Cheltenham. Whilst he may well be known for managing many teams across the Football League, the fact that he took a semi-professional team from the sixth tier of English football to the third tier in the space of five years is nothing short of a footballing miracle.